Hi everyone, just a quick note before this episode. Um, unfortunately, we recorded this on the 28th of August, which was two days before uh, the actor who played Maurice, uh, Ed Asner, uh, unfortunately died. Um, we don't make reference to that in this episode, obviously. Um, so anyone who thought, who was wondering why we didn't, it's only that reason, basically. Um, so yeah, uh, rest in peace to Ed Asner, uh, who played a brilliant role as Maurice in this episode. But uh, uh, anyway, on with the show. You've probably convinced yourself you've seen aliens. You know why you think you see the things you do? Because I have seen them. Because you're a lonely man. A lonely man. Chasing pair of masturbatory illusions that you believe will give your life meaning and significance, in which your pathetic social maladjustment makes impossible for you to find elsewhere. You probably consider yourself passionate, serious, misunderstood, am I right? Paramasturbatory? Welcome to Most Unwanted, an X Files podcast. I'm Chex, joined by Luke, as always. How you doing, Luke? I'm not too bad. I should probably do that for my intro, intro shouldn't I? Just like lead into it and ask you how you are instead of just going, and it's Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, each to their own. Everyone, we've got different styles. Everyone's got their own style, yeah, exactly. And, and some work and some don't, and that's fine, and that's absolutely fine. Don't need fine. to put yourself down. <laughs> I actually. I mean, my last intro was very short, mm-hmm. so I've thought of like, what can I, what can I say to you? But this one, I had an idea last episode. Okay, I wanted to talk about locations okay. for the X Files. Where right. would you, is there any places where you'd like to visit? Is there any places like you, if you could like go on an X Files tour? Oh, okay. Is there any oh, places? Like, that, yeah, yeah. Go, go to somewhere that the X Files is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visit like some of the on-set locations, <laughs> and obviously we don't know what we don't necessarily know what's like studio and what's. Not, so, but one that springs to mind just because I remember the image of it was there was, I think it was the episode where Mulder and Scully are like in the um, forest and they're like they're together. Yes. There's a bit where they go to like a bait shop or something and it's like a big dinosaur. Yes, yeah, yeah. That would be quite cool to visit. That'd be interesting. I don't know if I'd base my entire holiday around going there. Yeah, I think it was like in the middle of nowhere, but that was a cool vi- visual. That yeah. that one springs to mind just out of something. I, I thought to myself, like, where would I like a picture taken? Do you know what I mean? Mm. And again, it's almost certainly not there. It's like, this is like a s- set. Mm. But if, if it was there, I would like to be from the film, you know, the um, Out in the Desert with like the the, the bees, where, oh, uh, like yeah, the, yeah. the farms and all the, like, the bees and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I wouldn't mind going to like somewhere like there. Yeah. Um, but there's like a lot of different bars and stuff like that. Mm. I know um, one of our listeners, I. I want to say it was, I think it was Kathy. I think so, yeah. Went to the place from, um, oh, which episode was it now? Was it the one that was like a rip-off of uh, Twin Peaks? I remember that scene with the pie, was it? It was the pie, yeah. yeah. What episode was that? It's my favourite uh, episode and I can't fucking remember the... Jose Chung, is it? Oh, yeah, that, that's that's the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that would be cool, stuff yeah. like that, little places like that. But, um, yeah, like, it would be cool to like sort of do that. I, I'm more and more... Fancying doing stuff like that, like mm. there's um, we, me and um, Jem plan to go on a honeymoon. Obviously, that got cancelled because of COVID. But we was planning on going to Japan, and um, on the way back from Japan, we were going to stop off at Hawaii for a week. Oh, okay, yeah. And yeah. do like obviously we'd love to do Hawaii. We'd love to see the culture and whatnot. But a big part of why we wanted to go was we wanted to do with the Lost Tour. The Lost Tour. Yeah. We wanted to go to those like yellow houses where the others camp mm. is and stuff like that. And that like. It does appeal to me, that sort of stuff. It really does. Like, going to New Zealand and doing the Lord of the Rings tour yeah, yeah, as well, like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's iconic a, locations. Yeah, that's a, uh, you have to be some convincer to say, I want to go on holiday to New Zealand specifically because I want to see the Lord of the Rings. That's the thing, isn't yeah. it? Like, you've got to really... I think I think the way to do it is going on holiday just to see the place. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you, you go to go to New Zealand just to go to New Zealand. Yeah. And then if, if something's there at the time, brilliant, you'll go to see that. You know what I mean? I yeah, think that's exactly. the right way to do it. It, it was kind of like, I probably talk about this too often, we went to Croatia, obviously we were going to Croatia for, for yes. work stuff. 
well, while we were there, it's like, oh, that's from Game of Thrones, that's from, you know, and you saw yeah, all these sure. things from there, so I think New York's like that, I know somebody who went to New York and basically did, like, the movie tour, and it's literally so many locations. Oh, yeah, I can so, imagine, yeah, yeah, I can imagine pretty much every like, building has the, a story. Went to the Ghostbusters uh, place. Is the, that in New York? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah, I, the didn't, actual, I didn't think The actual, like, front of it, which is fitting, I suppose, uh, Ghostbusters, with uh, what we've got talking later on. I don't, I don't, I don't follow. <laughs> <laughs> why did you ruin my? <laughs> well, why don't we get straight to the episode then? This is a before I me mean, before we get to it. We're doing a Christmas episode in in what will be September when this I'm, comes out. I'm literally wearing my shorts, so <laughs> I mean we spoke about this in a previous episode, but yeah, it feels weird to be tackling Christmas at this time. But yeah, did uh, did it affect your viewing of it in any way? No, not really, because. No. Other than them having presents and saying, oh, it's Christmas Day tomorrow, there's no real mention. It doesn't no. feel Christmassy at all. There is, I will say this, there is like Christmas songs and like a lot of like yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of jingle bells and literally like Christmas songs throughout. I think I've been desensitized by that and I've been desensitized by your fiance who literally puts Christmas songs in playlist throughout the year. Yeah, she likes to throw one in as a curveball. <laughs> Every now and again, Elton John can uh, jump into Christmas, can just appear. It's like, what's going on? So yeah, I kind of been desensitised. Yeah, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't see a problem anyway. But we can save that. Let's get into the episode. So this week we're looking at Season 6, Epitope. Episode six, should I say, not episode. Episode six called "How the Ghost Stole Christmas," um, directed by Chris Carter, written by Chris Carter. Originally aired December thirteenth, nineteen ninety-eight. We've got a ghost story, Luke. Yeah, a ghost story for Christmas. I always think that like there must be a break after this, like for Christmas, like where they probably. I reckon I could, that... I could tell you right away whether there was. Yes, there was. Yeah, yeah. the next episode aired on January third. Yeah, yeah, and I've just seen. Just seen like a picture of it as I just searched it, and it's a devil with flames behind it. it was a very different vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we got that to look forward to next week. Oh, cool, um, beautiful. Um, so yeah, with this one, I mean, I was already dubious. I, yeah. We all, know, everyone who listens to this podcast throughout the, um, the last couple of years knows I don't deal well with ghost stories. Mm. This one was a little bit different, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, there is definitely that sort of aspect of like me sighing when it came on. Yeah, this, this is a question. I I thought of this before we started. I put it in my notes. This is a mini questions with the boy. Questions, 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 I wonder if this has got anything to do with it. Do you believe in ghosts? No, not no, at all. You don't believe in them at all, do you? Not and at all, yeah. I, I think I'm on the same... I don't really believe in them, but I'm always fascinated by ghosts, like, you know what I mean? Like, and ghost stories. Like. Yeah, I mean, I I like... I think my... I think I've said this before, but I think the main thing is I just feel like other things do it better. Yeah. I've seen films and ghost stories um, and, like, TV shows. Like, I'll tell you... One of the best ghost stories I've ever seen is the Haunts on Hill House. Yeah, and I thought it was really good. Bly yeah. Manor as well. Both of those I thought were phenomenal ghost stories, mm. um, and I really enjoyed them. Mm. It, so it's not to do with ghosts per se. It's just I always have a hard time with X Files doing it. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I mean. I don't know why. I'm I'm not sure really. I, I think this this is going to be an episode where uh, we might have very. Vastly different opinions. I reckon so. I also think this could be a very short episode. Yeah, yeah. Because I was looking through my notes and it's very much... It all takes place pretty much within the same two rooms of the house mm-hmm. for, es- for the es- most part. Essentially, yeah. Um, and it's a lot. It's very dialogue heavy as well. Um, but I'll go through quickly what happened. I'm sure, as I say, especially because we've got such different opinions, I'm sure we'll be able to mm-hmm. have a good conversation about it. Um, we start off with... Mulder and Scully both pulling up to a haunted house. Um, yeah. We find out that it's Christmas Eve and Scully's kind of there reluctantly. Um, but yeah. Mulder's very excited to check out this this haunted house that, that he's been investigating for a while that yeah. he knows the story of. Is it something with this straight away is that it's just again hammering this Mulder has no life outside yes. of this because she, Mulder, uh, Scully is literally there 
uh, with her Christmas present saying, I need to get these out, you know what I mean? Like, I need to do all these family things. Whereas Mother's like, why can't you just sit around and watch a ghost house with me? Yeah, exactly. No, completely oblivious yeah. to the fact that, like, people might have other things on Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do think, like, one of the things I do really enjoy about this episode is the psychoanalysis of both Mulder and Scully, which yeah. we've mentioned a few times already this season, and it mm. seems to be a recurring theme of they're really, they're really cracking down on the fact that, like, Mulder and Scully are, don't have the perfect life. Like, yeah, they, yeah. they do have their flaws. And to that point, Scully, despite all that, how busy she is, and despite how reluctant she is, she's there. Yeah, she's And she's time. made time on yeah. Christmas Eve to be there. Like, a lot of people wouldn't do that. Yeah, exactly. So, and they do mention that later on in the episode. Um, Mulder mentions that this, this brief story, and I'll quickly mm. try and sort of give you the, the main points. Um, during Christmas of 1917... Uh, a couple living in the house agree to a lover's pact. Um, basically, like, one murdering the other person and then killing themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it says that they couldn't stand the thought of being alone after the other died, and so that's why they decided to end it all on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he goes on to sort talk about how every Christmas Eve um, this house is haunted, and over the years there's been multiple couples that have died there. Yeah. Um, and also he mentions that like the house hasn't been in use for a while. So this there's been a lot of hauntings over the years as the house was in use. The house has kind of been derelict and obviously the haunting stories came about and it became renowned as this place. So over the last few years it's kind of been just an abandoned place. Yeah. I um I did like the setup of this with the story and just the opening of the episode because it felt very campy. Like yes. as you said something off off um re- the recording that like I didn't write it down, but it's, it's, it's exactly what I was thinking of the style, is it's the Haunted Mansion from Disneyland. Yes. It's that kind of, like, fun ghost story, you know? Yeah, where it's... for sure. It's definitely, like, you could tell immediately from this episode how self-contained it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. And how it's almost its own little universe, do you know what I mean? But, like, yeah, I pretty much, like, a like for, like, some of the rooms in the house, especially, were the haunted mansion in Disneyland. I'm pretty sure they used the Pepper's Ghost effect at one point as well. Do you know that thing where they show the reflection on like a, a bit of glass? Or something yes. Like that? Yeah. There was a bit where they look and look away, and it's gone. Yeah. And it looked, and I was like, that looks like a Disneyland effect. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of campy vibe to it. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Even like the fog on the outside. I I of the grounds. I saw that. How does that happen? You know what I mean? Like I don't think it does outside does it, of ghost stories. <laughs> like it doesn't. I put that. I was like, does this actually happen in real life? Does fog like appear? Like I'm know? almost certain it doesn't. Like <laughs> fog definitely yeah. exists, but like to have it rolling on the grounds, yeah. that is a trope of, of ghost stories. Yeah, yeah. I've I've never seen it in real life. I I just wondered if there was like a, a scientific reason for that, or or if it was just literally stuff that we've seen in films and just associate with haunted areas. Yeah. yeah. So it it is very. Yeah, camp, I think, is the right word. I also think it, like, it's very storybook. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so you got that, and you, like you said, you got that impression right from the off. And this sort of exposition from Mulder of, like, let me tell you a ghost story. Yeah, literally, it literally yeah. was a storybook of, like, this is the history of this, and now we're going to have our own little ghost story of a night. It felt very old school, because like the, the, I think this is where I've sort of been down on like ghost stories with the X-Files before, is this one leans heavily into, this is just a classic ghost yeah. story, very gothic. It wasn't pretending yeah. to be original. No, ex- exactly. All. It was le- leaning into the tropes, yeah. it was being campy, it was like um, playing up on all of like the stuff that you know. Um, and I think that's what resonated with me a lot is that it's like stuff that you know, but with these two characters who shouldn't be in this kind of story, really. Yeah. Um. Um. So yeah, they end up entering the house, um, much to like, Scree doesn't want to be there. She even tries to go, and Mulder stole her keys. We don't find out up until later. Yeah. But um, she follows Mulder in the house, and as they're sort of exploring, like you said, there's a, a brief figure for a while mm. that we see in the background. But Scully's just going behind Mulder and basically explaining th- wh- why people see ghosts and why people believe yeah. that there are ghosts. And um, She does mention that she's scared, yeah. but it's an irrational fear and she knows there's nothing to be scared about, despite yeah. 
doors starting to open and close, lights turning on and off. Yeah. And the cl- like you said, the classic horror tropes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's um, we just get all these hammered home to us. Really, it's it's stuff that you've seen a million times before. But it, <laughs> I, I think the fun with this one is that it is these characters who one is a complete skeptic, doesn't believe in any of this, and the one who's who's um like all for it and we've seen them in so many different encounters and stuff like that it feels fun again it's just fun to it yeah there Uh, definitely is and Mulder as well with like all up for exploring but also being the one that's like frozen with fear when (laughs) when a door opens yeah literally at one point he sends Scully to go and look in the door (laughs) right behind you as he's rooted to the spot (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) um yeah, again, I feel like I'm going to be rushing through this, but it does. it is just, like, the bulk of this takes place in these next two rooms. They go into the room where um, the door keeps opening, mm-hmm. and it ends up being a library of sorts. And, again, this is the room that I thought looked like Disney's haunted house. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, I know you've yeah. been on the ride, but yeah. there's, a, there's a scene in the ride where you're on the balcony, the, the very similar to the balcony they're that they're on, on the, and they're yeah. dancing on the floor below. Yeah, yeah, and it looked exactly like that. Um, so they enter this um, room, and basically, Scully comes to the conclusion that someone's living here. Maybe not legally, but someone's living there because the lights are on. The fire has um, just been put out, mm. and there's evidence of people like actually living here. And Mulder kind of seems disappointed by this. Yeah. Um. And then very quickly goes back into the tropes, the spookiness of the ladders disappearing so they can't yeah. get back out, yeah. doors being locked, and then before you know it, there's tapping from mm. underneath the floor and like the floorboards are moving, and when they check underneath, they find two corpses. Yeah, uh, and um, I, I, I love that the, the, the switch as well um, with this when they find the two corpses is they start investigating it more. Uh, and realise that they're both wearing the same clothes that they're wearing, and yeah. it's like that classic, oh, it was them all along, yeah. like kind of like mental trick. And it's that... Scully that doesn't like yeah. realise it rather than Mulder. Yeah, yeah. I loved, I did like Mulder's like, oh, sucks, to, how embarrassing, when when they realised Scully was wearing it. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, look at this guy. <laughs> yeah, it's wearing the same. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to know that both of these corpses have been killed by gun gunshots. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, this is where this is when it starts to get difficult to recap after this because um, they end up, as I say, doors are being locked, um, a lot of strange stuff going on, lights turning off, off and on, um, and as they further explore, they end up getting split up, mm-hmm. and like doors that was once there are now brick walls and and like locked yeah. doors, and basically they end up in their own separate rooms. Yeah, but the rooms. Are the same room. It's just like sort of mirrored. Yeah, they're identical, but yeah, yeah, yeah. and like there's things different about them, but the same as yeah. well. Um, and this is where we meet um, the people living in the house, mm. which is Morris and um, is it Lydia? Lida. 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 Okay. Did you recognise either? Mainly their voices. I didn't know. So this this is again where I'm like, oh god, there's some stars in this, and I don't know if they're stars at the at the time, but they're stars now. Um, Lida was Miss Valerie from the Magic School Bus. Do you know the driver? The yeah, magic? yeah. Uh, and the um, Morris, uh, it was Morris, wasn't it? The, yeah, the guy. Yeah. He was the old man from Up. No way, uh, was he? <laughs> yeah. He's also apparently played Santa in Elf as well. Wow. So yeah, there you uh, go. To fame. But yeah, I was like, his voice sounds really familiar. So IMDb straight away, and I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we get here is. We get Maurice talking to Mulder for starts. So we'll, go, we'll go through that scene. Um, and it's basically like, again, it's the trope of like them scaring Mulder and then Mulder sort of like coming down and like thinking, oh, this is just a normal person. And Maurice is even like laughing at him saying, you think I'm a ghost? I thought you was a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Um, but very quickly, and this is the bit that I did enjoy about the episode, mm. it became, and we realised why later, but I, I didn't realise this at the time, it became Maurice just psychoanalyzing Mulder mm-hmm. and basically just picking his life apart and talking about how um, you're here on Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. Um, why do you believe in ghosts? Why do you believe in aliens? Is it because you think your life is so boring and uneventful that this needs to give you purpose? Yeah. And yeah. like 
he mentions about people not wanting to hang out with him and like the one person that does want to hang out with you annoys you like yeah. Scully yeah. constantly puts you down constantly naysays and um, doesn't believe your opinions but you hang out with them anyway because who else is going to hang out with you yeah um and it, like really tears Mulder apart like Mulder fights for a little bit but then slowly sort of breaks down and like not not like breaks down himself but like it wears him down to the point where he just kind of starts to accept it. He kind of realizes that he's actually speaking a lot of truth. Mm-hmm. It, it reminded me a lot of um, uh, there's a game I know you've played it. Um, Until Dawn. Do you know the scenes with the psych- psychologist in that where it's like constantly like yes. tearing down the characters like um, their how they are and whatnot. And it, it, it reminded me a bit of that. Like I suppose being in a spooky house and yeah. that <laughs> added to that feeling. Again, very common tropes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But this at this point we didn't know like whether Maurice was a ghost or not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he did just seem like a kind of a wise old man, I suppose, Mm -hmm. but like very cutting. Like, he did really attack Mm -hmm. Mulder. And we see a similar thing with Lyda as well, with Scully, but like attacking her for the fact that of course she followed Mulder here on Christmas Mm -hmm. Eve because she might pretend like she's got better things to do, but does she? Like, you know what I mean? And like, really, I think this this is a good way and again, I wasn't the biggest fan of this episode, but mm-hmm. I did enjoy this aspect of it's a really good way of halfway through a season or halfway through like a big arc that mm-hmm. we've that we're seeing with Mulder and Scully. It's a really good way to just sit down and break down exactly where we are in yeah. both of these, these characters' mindsets. Exactly, like it, it sort of yeah, it, it gives you a snapshot of, of of everything that's happening and what they're actually thinking. Um, and also, it, it it kind of like clues them in on on it to sort of actually act on it. Like, yes, because I think until someone, uh, I mean, most people are probably like this. Until somebody tells you what you're like, you know what you're like. It's just until somebody's told you, you're like, oh yeah, that that's how I am. Yeah. Um, and then whether it's a, a cause for change or whatever is is whatever. But um, I think actually hearing somebody else repeat your flaws back to you is is, is sort of eye opening. Um, as well with this, it's just um. I just thought it was interesting that like we we see um them both swapping between the two of them to try and like because essentially they're trying to break each other down like psycho you mean the ghosts yeah yeah, yeah 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 we we have like that scene in the middle don't we yeah where yeah. like it kind of gives you a glimpse of what the story is yeah. so like when the ghosts meet yeah, yeah so like they sort of start to say oh I don't really want to do this like oh, this is so cliche mm. do we have to do this and like Lyle is basically saying if we break them down, this is the easiest way to break them down because Christmas is the loneliest night of the year. Yeah. And yet, so they, like you said, they do sort of swap in yeah. between and like, just basically like, psych- psychologically attack Mulder and Scully. Yeah. I am, um, I did like as well, f- physical comedy, uh, the uh, nine and three quartered um, walking into the brick wall. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just, just, you know what's coming. And so you say, oh, just come through here and then just walk straight into it. It's like, you know, well, Literally, everyone could have seen that. Comment. Yeah, yeah. I, I while I was watching this, like I sort of made a note here of like, uh, and I'd be interested to see what pe- other people think of it. That up until this point, or like you know, in the, in the series so far, I can understand why diehards of the series wouldn't like this series. This series so far, mm-hmm. because it does radically feel. It feels radically different in terms of like tone on stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. It feels a lot more lighthearted, a lot more fun. And I mean, it's a Christmas episode, so it is going to be yeah, different for sure. anyway. But I can I can understand people not liking this, though not liking this style. But personally, I really really enjoyed this episode for for the fun it had. Like it tears. We we've sort of known these characters now, and we're we're sort of having these ghosts essentially telling yeah. them the psychological flaws that we've all seen in yeah, the characters. Yeah, for sure. But it's it's just fun basically seeing them in this environment, in this like sp- like spooky haunted house environment. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it just again, just a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, these this, this episode was. Um. And that that was. For for the last few now, I've I've felt like this that it, it definitely feels like a departure from what came before because we'd get these kind of jokes before, but it's like peppered through. yeah, few and far yeah. between yeah 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 yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah they, they aren't like whereas this like kind of feels like the entire episode is a joke. I mean, <laughs> it's still funny when two people have been shot <laughs> in a room, like, yeah, to yeah. a degree, and it's like you wouldn't have this kind of levity I think before, but. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that was something that I felt through it. Yeah, it definitely feels like 
they've taken a, 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 a stance not to take themselves too seriously. Yeah, definitely. And I, I actually think, for me personally, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because mm-hmm. some of the some of the episodes that I liked the least over the past five seasons or five and a bit seasons have been the episodes where it's a silly concept, but they've taken it very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and so exactly. like, if you don't do that, then you can have a, have a bit of fun with whatever you're talking about. Exactly. And, and you can still have, like, I'm not saying every episode should be a, a, yeah. laugh, and a, a laugh a minute, but like, you can have like serious episodes, then like sort of serious with jokes then jokey episodes, you know what I mean? Like, you can have this mix. Yeah. And I feel like definitely now um, it, it's found its stride in doing all of those confidently, in, in my opinion, anyway. Like we've said, I mean, I don't want to run through it, like, verbatim. So, like, there is a, a lot of back and forth, um, and it's a lot, of, a lot of dialogue of basically them talking to Mulder and Scully. While this is all happening, there's still those spooky things going on with ladders appearing and disappearing, and mostly at the ghost's will yeah. as well. I like the scene with uh, Mulder having to pull himself out. <laughs> yeah, only for the ladder to appear straight away afterwards, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Um, the bodies under the floor keep disappearing mm. as well. Mm. So like Mulder and Scully both sort of start to realise that like it is haunted and these are ghosts, and then it all culminates in the revelation that these two characters, the ghosts... Are the the, the Star Quest lovers? Yeah. The, the and we find that out by the woman putting her hands up when I think it was Scully that puts, yes. her, puts, her, puts a gun up to yeah. her, and she's got a big hole yeah. in, in her stomach. Um, and then later on, the guy once he lifts his hat up has the yeah. hole in his, his head, head. Yeah. and so obviously we know these are the couple from 1917 mm-hmm. that killed each other. Um. I thought they, I thought I thought the, the effects was dodgy a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like it reminded me of um, Shaun of the Dead. You know, really, yeah. like the, the hole just to show. Oh, like you can see through it when clearly, you know, it's just a little bit of green. Or yeah, something yeah, to yeah. Show through, but I mean, it's not bad. But it is, it is what it is. I did like. Um, to be fair, it's just reminded me when we find out that um, she's got the hole in her stomach. Um, it's because Scully is so jittery, and it it is funny how like she's. Talking about all uh, as she's going round this house at the beginning of how all of these phenomena are explained. Yet still, when she encounters somebody, yeah. she's absolutely like panicked, like uh, flinging a gun around. Whereas Mulder, on the other hand, is like, "Oh, this might be ghosts." Yet when he actually encounters one, he's cool as cucumber. Really. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. It, it is interesting to see that kind of again. It's it's more about like them as people, but it's interesting to see that they're not as. Strong in their own convictions, yeah. uh, like in arenas, as um, or if that if those convictions are like tested, yeah, then they react a little bit differently. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 for sure. It is it is a, a good point to be honest. Um, so it all it basically all culminates in Scully being told that Ma- basically that like, Mulder's gonna kill her. I'm not mm-hmm. really sure how yeah. this like sort of comes about where it's like a viable option, mm-hmm. but like they m- make out the curse is real. And that Mulder's going to kill her. Mm-hmm. And then next time she sees Mulder, or who she believes to be Mulder, mm-hmm. um, Mulder does take a gun and open fire and shoot Scully. Mm-hmm. I did like this scene, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. There's a like a, a big slow motion scene where like Scully just looks so betrayed mm-hmm. as she sort of looks down and looks back up and sees Mulder holding the gun and yeah. realizes what's happened. Um and again, I know none of this will matter because it's like it, it, it is basically a dream. Once again, it is like it was all yeah. a dream at the end. Yeah. But I like this moment. I like the, the just the look on Scully's face of like, you, I can't believe you did it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You get that betrayal on her. But it, it is also like interesting as well because I think Duchovny here plays it well because you can tell that he's not Mulder. Yes, I mean, like, yes it's, it's a very different yeah. way. Like the way he carries himself yeah, is very exactly. different. Yeah, um, And it also similarly... To um to what happens with Mulder as well, so yeah, I think uh, Scully plays it like um because again it is hard to follow. I will I will concede that that it's hard to follow um who's shooting who, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if it's they they real. Do, they have this scene straight after where like they do try and explain it straight away, don't they? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. you you then see Maurice dragging Lida out as Lida starts screaming no no, and then you see Mulder being dragged away. Yeah, yeah. so it's it is Lida um basically showing illusions yeah and like setting her own things i'm not really sure i think that the plan is to like sort of go towards the end of the episode again the plan is for 
them both to shoot each other yeah, for yeah. real at one point. Yeah. But in order to do that, they do make the illusion that they've already shot each other, which yeah. is a bit, a bit strange. Yeah. Um, but it does kind of close to work because Mulder then comes across... See, this is the way it doesn't make sense to me. Mulder does come across Scully. Mm. Is that downstairs where they're like... Uh, no, no, when, when Scully first shoots him. Yeah. But that must have been the ghosts as well. I, I think, yeah, I think that's meant to be Lida. I'm not sure. But it's like, weird that, like, yeah. Lida would have been sat down and not just, like... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, not, like, I know what you mean. Because yeah. it does make out that it is Scully. But, like, yeah. Scully does say she never shot Mulder, so it definitely wasn't Scully on the floor. It's yeah, weird, yeah. a little bit strange. Yeah. yeah. But, like, I'm, I'm very nitpicking there. Yeah. Like, that's not <laughs> yeah. really an issue. Long story short... Both Mulder and Scully lie shot on the floor, thinking that one each each of other has shot each other. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's the end. And then they're dead. So <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I did think that I was like, oh, this would be a terrible way to end the series. <laughs> yeah, I did. It's, this is one of those episodes where I was like, it was getting up to like the thirty-five minute mark, and I was like, mm. how are they going to finish this off? Like, yeah. like where's the ending to this? It's because yeah. you know some episodes where you're like. There just doesn't seem to be a part of it where it's like, where? I thought, like, am I, is this a two-parter again? Because yeah, like, it yeah. just didn't feel like there was enough time to end it. They did end it, like like you said, with like... Very quickly. <laughs> very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, yeah, we'll, we might as well just get to it and we can talk about it in more broad mm-hmm. strokes. Um, there's actually quite a disturbing scene here where Mulder and Scully are both dragging themselves to the front door of the mm-hmm. house. In, and there's just their own blood just smeared all over the floor, mm. especially Mulder. I don't know what it was, but it, it did feel a bit of a departure from the rest of the episode in the sense of like dragging himself through Scully's blood mm. and just being so covered head to toe. It was kind of dark, I thought. Yeah, it, I think the sound effects as well helped for this because it yeah. felt like squelchy and yes, like it yes. felt very like bloody hell. This is quite like like it, like it was such an effort to like yeah, drag yeah. themselves. Yeah. And they start pointing their guns at each other. I think this is what the ghosts wanted. They wanted them to sort of, like, take the shots. Um, but they do talk it through and both realise that the other didn't shoot the other. Yeah. And then, I found this so weird. Mulder goes, you didn't shoot me, you didn't shoot me, well, I didn't shoot you. Looks down and goes, oh, I'm fine, and then yeah. walks out. Yeah. And it was very much like, like the, it, Mulder's face as well is like, huh. Like just like a yeah. hearty like smile. Yeah. Like yeah. Come on, stand up, Scully. We're gonna go, and they they get into the car and leave. Just drive away. Yeah. I, I think it's again. It's another one of these tropes, and it, it, like yeah. I, I think as a ghost story, I'm like yeah. it's a bit weird. But like if I look at it from like a Disney sort of like spooky story, rather than a ghost story, a spooky story. Mm. Yeah, it kind of just. I've, I've, I, can't, I can't remember what it is, but I have heard these like stories of where like yeah ghosts trick you into thinking. Mm. It kind of reminded me a bit of um, oh, what was that game? Uh, Call of Cthulhu, the like the yeah. role playing game. Where, yeah, like, you yeah. have the madness like things, and I mean it's probably it's not a very um, realistic way to portray these kind of things, I suppose. But it's that kind of thing of oh something traumatic's happened and you start seeing things yes. that aren't there, and maybe it's maybe it's that kind of thing because of these like. Illusions, yeah, and like, yeah. Well, literally, like making you believe like you're yeah. bleeding out, like yeah, that. Yeah. That's it's got to be powerful enough. That, yeah, you exactly. Know. So that that's the vibe I got from it. I, I can understand where it just feels that <laughs> it feels like the end of the last one, but I, for some reason it didn't. But you liked me it, as much. yeah? <laughs> very strange. Yeah. It, it is weird, and how like depending on the setting, I'm like the more genre. forgiving. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I can understand how it does feel like it wraps up very quickly. Well, at least that story does, and then you do have a sort of a, one final scene of both um, Maurice and Lida sat by the fire, mm. enjoying Christmas together, and they're basically... This was a nice scene, really, in a weird sort of way, because yeah. they are ghosts talking about, like, murdering people, but they sort of like, oh, we almost got him, yeah. oh, well, we'll always have our Christmas, and but and it basically, like, they're brought together by this sort of Christmas tradition, and, like, talking about, like, how they do it every year, but, like... Oh, that we'll get him next time, and I don't know. Even though they're, well, they're talking about like horrific stuff, like literally trying to make people kill themselves. Yeah. Um. There's a kind of sweetness there as well of like yeah. a sort of love between these two. Again, star-crossed lovers that yeah. like just it didn't work out for together forever. Essentially. Yeah. I, I think Which they got that's what they did it yeah. for. Yeah. Like they yeah. literally committed suicide or did that pact so that they could be together forever, yeah. and it and it worked. It'd be. I, I think this ending. Uh, if if I was. 
the producer, the one change I would have made, and this might have ruined it, so like anybody at home <laughs> goes this shit. Um, I would have shown the couples that had killed themselves as well at the same time. Yes, you know what I mean because it shows because then it would have been like there's a reason to do a, this. Yeah, like they're trying to get people to stay together forever, and then it, you could have su- kind of said with uh, Mulder and Scully, they saw them as a couple that could have stayed together forever, and then if they'd killed themselves, they could have done this. You know what would have been great. This is uh, this is my pitch to, to, oh, yeah. to further CC. If your... you're listening, we've got some ideas. <laughs> Big CC, <laughs> hot ideas coming in right? to, to change your episode that was recorded in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're listening, CC. This is so your idea. I think yeah. that's perfect. So you like you pan up, mm. and you see the ghosts of like like <clears throat> kind of like they are on the yeah. on the chairs, like sort of almost fully formed figures, mm. but like kind of wispy. Yeah, you see the ghosts of the couples, and they're all happy. They're all living together. They spend every Christmas together. Blah blah blah. And then they're like, "Oh, we almost got him, didn't we?" And then they turn around and look, and a more ghostly figure of like Mulder and Scully, at like at the door, mm. but like they're hugging. They're like married. Like maybe show a wedding ring or something like mm. that. They've spent an eternity together. And then watch have them turn around and walk out the door as Mulder and Scully walk out the door, uh, okay, and it's like yeah. they could have been together forever, forever. but they chose against it. Yeah, you know what I mean? And yeah. I thought that would have been cool because yeah. then it was like, oh, is it? Are they doing the right thing? Things. Do you know that, what I mean? That, that's the thing that in my head, that's what I was thinking. Like the, the, whether they're obviously it's not. It's a good not. Thing. Yeah, it's, it's not. Called, it's thing. not the right thing. But, Please don't create the death pacts. Yeah, anybody listening. It's not a good thing to do. But it like, can be romantic. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's filmed and recorded. No, they're definitely not. <laughs> Do not. 100%. Um, but no, you know what I mean? Like that kind of, yeah, it's tr- it creates this like bit of sweetness to yes, them. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, they could have, you know, lived together so it's forever. Tra- yeah. Tragic, tragic. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, that that's the only change that I made. Uh, I think if I could have changed anything to the episode. but yeah. yeah. As a whole, for me, it just didn't quite hit the right notes. And I didn't think it was a bad episode by any means. I really enjoyed the psychoanalysis parts. I, I thought that was a very clever way of like just g- basically giving everyone a recap of like, mm. oh, this these are two characters and they're not perfect and the, 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 there are flaws and they kind of make up for one another's flaws as well in, in weird ways. Yeah. Um. But also the relationship that they have isn't healthy either. Mm. Like, and, and that sh- is no relationship is one hundred percent healthy, but it's not healthy to like follow someone around because you adore them and like put your own like family aside you know what I mean that's not healthy and Mulder's will it's certainly not healthy of like cutting everything out of your life for this one dream yeah this one solo pursuit yeah yeah exactly so I enjoyed that aspect of it I'm just I just couldn't it's the ghost thing I don't know I just I either kind of want it to be like super super scary or like way more comedic in camp. Yeah. Like yeah. I it's this halfway house thing that I can't really get on board with. Yeah. Um but I'm an, I'm it's it's a weird one. I'm under no illusion that it was a bad episode. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I I, I understand that. Like my my thoughts on it when I finished it was I can completely understand people not liking this. Yeah. Especially people who are purists to the show. I can fully understand them not enjoying this. I, I, I think for me two things always like make me it automatically interested in it. A gothic ghost story, like a, yeah. g- a classic haunted it's house very story. very That's up your yeah, alley, def- yeah. Or <laughs> nautical ghost stories, which is a very <laughs> different thing. That kind of like, yeah, nautical thing. Do you know what it is? I like that, like, Call of Cthulhu kind of thing, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, yeah, so with that, I, I think I definitely probably forgave it a lot of its stuff, but just overall, I just thought it was really fun. Like, yeah. I, I just really enjoyed the, the fun of it. it. It felt like it felt like a normal ghost story, but with two characters who don't usually interact with this kind of level of campy, yeah. like horror, just plop right in the middle of it. Um, so, I, I think for that reason, I did enjoy. It. And there was also a, a, a definite tone of because let's let's. We, I mean, we're saying this now, and we, we might have forgot about it a little bit because we are filming in September. But let's not forget this was a Christmas story. Yeah, yeah. And there was true. this overarching theme throughout of what Christmas is, which yeah. I've never really touched upon. Yeah. Um, and I'm only really thinking about it now, to be honest. But there is this whole idea of um, what does Christmas mean to you? And like it being not only the loneliest time of the year um, for a lot of people, including Mulder and bit, Scully, yeah. um, but also what it could be and what it, what it is for the ghosts. Do yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it is something different. And I did actually like it 
it was very um, Scrooge esque. Yeah, yeah, definitely. In yeah. that sort of like um, a classic Christmas story, yeah. there was definitely that element to it. Th- yeah, I think that that that's there's definitely a lot of like Scrooge and the, yeah, like the the um, uh, changing your ways for Christmas yes. and stuff like that. But uh, I, I did as well. Just to, just enjoy like the. Just the con- the concentration on their relationship and their characters. Like I suppose you get to do this with these kind of bottle episodes, where the plot was quite low, uh, light. You know what I mean? There wasn't really too much happening, as we said in the notes. Like yeah. it seems quite uh, what happens is not a lot. It's a dialogue heavy episode. Yeah, uh, and it, it's mainly just concentrating on their relationship and who they are as yeah. people and what they can do and what they can change. So uh, I, I liked it for that. I think it did push them two forward, even, even though if. At the end of this, you aren't happy as an episode. I think you could take a lot from it of their their relationship yeah. going forward. But yeah, okay. So before we get to the production notes, I have one final thing that I want to ask you. Go on. We do get a scene oh, yeah. with Mulder and Scully in their apartment afterwards, kind of just like dismissing what happened and like sort mm. of like, oh well, well, we don't have to talk about that type of thing. But they do reveal that they both bought each other Christmas presents. Yes, yeah. Which um. Like they said, they wasn't going to do, but they both have, and it was a nice little moment mm. where, like, they show how much they mean to each other. And Scully kind of admits that maybe she did want to be there. Like, basically, they're both acting like this never happened, but they've taken lessons away from the experience. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mulder realizes he was being selfish, and Scully realizes that well, was it really all Mulder, or did I in some way want to be there? Yeah. yeah. So they did take a lesson from it. What I want to ask you was, what do you think each person got the other person? One looked like a chocolate bar. I'm pretty oh. sure one looked like a big chocolate bar. What the c- cylindrical one? Yeah, the, yeah, the one. No, the one that looked like um, a square, like not a square. Because Scully like, bought Mulder like a square box, like a little yeah. sort of, and then Mulder bought Scully like a cylindrical. cylindrical. Like, See, I thought the square box was chocolates. Okay, the cylindrical one that kind of looks like some kind of. Do you know you can get those like um. Perfume, or not perfume, like aftershave, like yeah, the sets. But it was for Scully the cylindrical one. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, maybe that was perfume then. I think Mold has got a like um, one of them like little alien things, <laughs> like you know, like the little glasses, and you can see the alien floating up and up, up and down. Yeah, yeah. I reckon that's what. Mold I think yours, something. yours was way more inventive. Mine was practical. Yeah, yours was like, chocolate. Oh, just chocolate, just chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I was thinking, if I had to buy something for somebody last minute. Chocolate's probably a good. But this defense. wasn't last minute. He planned this. Well, that's true. Yeah, and I reckon Scully. Or oh, did he? Scully Mulder doesn't seem the type of person to plan. Of course things. he did. Yeah. He planned this. He got a little alien, and I reckon Scully the square box. It was like a a desk calendar of like like five hundred pinup girls. That's all. I, that's what I reckon the presents were. That's. Well, I mean, answers on a postcard, everybody. Yeah, has. let us know what did they buy each other. That's yeah. what. That's the. Big hot topic question that, from this episode. Well, it's a lot to think about, so uh, yeah, we'll leave you on that break. You can think about it whilst we go through the production notes. notes. Exactly. Luke's production notes. Writer, director, and series creator Chris Carter based how I, how the ghosts. See, this one says ghosts. We we had this discussion off air about whether it's ghosts or ghosts that stole Christmas, but we keep seeing. Different. I think it's ghosts. Ghosts. I think, I think there was yeah. one site that miscorrect, mi- incorrectly, should I say, miscorrectly, miscorrectly. I quite yeah. like that because it's it, it's also wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it adds it was it. miscorrectly yeah. written as ghost. Yeah. Um, he based uh, How the Ghosts Stole Christmas around a story idea he and fellow writer, executive producer Frank Spotnitz had been working on about a haunted house. The only scene that the two had really developed was what would be uh, what would become the climax of the episode. Mulder and Scully pulling themselves across the floor, bleeding profusely. <laughs> I like how that's, there's more to this point, but I just love how they're like, oh, I've got an idea for an episode. So they're shot and they're crawling. <laughs> but... You know what? That was the scene that stuck in my mind. So yeah, it obviously, yeah. I, it obviously was a powerful scene. I understand yeah, why yeah. that did inspire the rest of the episode. Yeah, it, it, it's just wild, and it how yeah. happens, and how different the episode turned out. Like that, that yeah. is not a, a campy ghost story no. idea. No, not Do you really. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Carter also wanted to keep all the action on a single set, which led to production designer Corey Kaplan proposing that they base it in Scully's apartment, a set the crew had not used uh, for a while. However, Carter, wanting to keep the haunted house motif, decided to set the episode in a haunted house and asked Kaplan to design a mansion set that was bleak, but not too bleak, decrepit, but not too decrepit, and deserted, but not too deserted. Be like, tell me what you want, Chris. Yeah, Chris, come on now. Come <laughs> on now. Don't give me these vague ideas. <laughs> I want it very LA, but a little bit Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to Vermont. <laughs> I don't know if that's just in the dragging yeah. Mulder or Duchovny, should I say? Where would be in the middle of. Uh, where did they shoot Vancouver? What's in between Vancouver and California? Um, why do you do this to us? I don't know. We'll find you it. You know we're going to make an idiot of ourselves? I'd say. Let's take a guess and I'll put it in post production if we're wrong. Okay. Um, I'm going to say. Um, Alaska? No, no way. Alaska's like over on the left. Yeah, but LA's over on the left as well. Yeah, but you'd be Vancouver's like over here. Isn't it? Okay, so you want something in the middle? Somewhere in the middle. I reckon it'd be something like Ohio or something like that. Michigan. Michigan. I'm just saying states <laughs> now or whatever. Yeah. 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 Let's... Is Michigan even a state? Michigan's a state. I, why aren't we doing this to ourselves? <laughs> we always embarrass ourselves. It's just embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. You start it all the time. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Uh... Corrections! <laughs> Oh my god, 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 Turns out we are both wrong. It is Oregon. If you're hearing this, if you're hearing this now, what this means is Luke messed up, but left it in because it embarrassed me more than him, and he's happy for that to happen. <laughs> if, you're not, of if, if you're not hearing this, then it means I got it less wrong than Luke, and he's <laughs> taken it out. <laughs> or... Option three, I couldn't be asked. <laughs> that is also, all three are just as likely. Could, could, any of them could happen. Um, How the Ghost Stole Christmas features the smallest cast of any X Files episode, with only Duchovny, Anderson, and the two guest stars. Yeah, Fantastic. actually, I never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. literally four. I, th- that's the thing with this. Like, you think the set and the st- like, the amount they very minimalist. Yeah, them, it's probably not going to cost them a lot. Um, Lily uh, Tomlin, who played the part of Lida, uh, had originally approached the X-Files producers several seasons prior and asked to be a cast in an episode. Carter agreed to meet her and the two discussed potential ideas for future episodes. Several years later, Carter decided to write How the Ghost Stole Christmas largely as a vehicle for her. Yeah. Nice nice to know. I I did say, I forgot to mention this in the show, but I thought both the ghosts were very, very good and very well played. Yeah, I I, I thought they they, they were... I mean, when you have this like minimal cast, you kind of have to have yeah. somebody who's like great in there. Also, yeah, I, I do think they're. I great. think equally um, menacing as well as kind of sweet. Like yeah. they they really play that line yeah. quite well. They're like, ah, oh, they want to kill us. Ah, oh, that's nice. They're in love. <laughs> <laughs> um, Originally, Carter wanted Bob Newhart to play the role of Maurice. However, Newhart was not interested. And so, <laughs> and so the production is team... categorically no. not asked. Chris, get out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> and so the production team approached Ed a- Asner, who, who readily agreed. Um, do you know who Bob Newhart is? I've, I've not heard the name before. Uh, no, I don't. No. no. Let's leave it at that. Let's not <laughs> embarrass ourselves anymore. <laughs> um, the production of the episode was bare bones, making use of only a few sets. Because of this, Heather, Cr- Heather Ghost Stole Christmas... Uh, was the cheapest six-season episode. However, the reduction on the budget made writing and directing the episode a challenge as Carter was forced to work within tighter production constraints. Mm. Double-edged sword there. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, The day before filming at the mansion was slated to begin, a fire erupted behind the building. Luckily, after an uh, an hour, local firemen were able to bring the blaze under control by digging a fire break, with the fire stopping a mere 300 feet from the house. Jesus, imagine. (laughs) Just burnt down, you'd be like, for Christ's sake. Um, uh, This one's got a lot to it. 
Uh, actually, yeah, we'll read through actually because there's some interesting parts to it. Uh, special effects editor Bill Miller uh, was tasked with designing the bloodless bullet holes that Scully and Mulder discover on Maurice and uh, Lyda. To create the effect, uh, Miller attached fluorescent cloth to the place of the bullets that would become the bullet wounds. An ultraviolet light was then added to the set uh, lighting, invisibly reflecting the ultraviolet light which Muller, uh, Miller used as tracking data. Okay. The, the cloth was then redu- uh, removed during post-production and computer-generated bullet holes were pasted in the place. Surely you'd just think they'd be able to do it with green screen? Like... I don't know whether. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not really sure. It did look funny. Yeah. Like it looked, weird, especially on the um, on Maurice, like the head one. Like yeah. there was moments where like it didn't even look like a hole. It looked like it was like angled weirdly. Mm. Yeah, it did look a bit weird. Mm. Um, but again, I don't think that was the point of the story. So no, like you kind of just sort of let it go. It was, um, Miller admitted that the technique was borrowed from the 1992 movie Death Becomes Her, although he sarcastically admitted that we did better and with less money. No, hockey, oh, hockey. Yeah, harsh. Have you ever seen Death Becomes Her? I haven't. No. Uh, the only thing I've ever seen is when like she falls down the stairs and breaks her neck and then gets back up and flips her head back up. Ooh. Okay. Um, basically, it's, it's comedy. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds hilarious. <laughs> I think basically the premise is it's uh, these people that can't die and they keep like oh, yeah. injuring themselves, themselves, themselves in ways that would kill a normal person, and so they're like messed up. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Bruce Willis. Is oh, that? okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm advertising this one. You'd love it. I'll watch it. Okay, I'll watch it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to watch it. Because <laughs> of the gun that I'm holding to. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anderson was later critical of the fake blood used in the episode uh, because the sheer quantity quickly coagulated and formed a gummy mess. Oh. Uh, which it sounded like it, it yeah. was like that, to be honest. It sounded like not like wet, it sounded like sticky. Yeah. You know I, mean? I thought it was very effective, though, if I'm honest. Like, I think, uh, I, think I, you would, I wouldn't change anything about that scene. No, no. Um, and finally, uh, Mark Snow, the composer of the episode, admitted to ripping off Joseph Han- uh, Hayden's uh, Toy Symphony to create the eerie, Baroque inspired harpsichord score, which I, I didn't mention that. I yeah. really like the music because it felt very. Classical yeah, like horror film, did. like yeah. that, like rrr, it sounded like the haunted mansion, like a bigger organ, type yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Snow also admits uh, that another major influence of the uh, for the episode was uh, Johnny Mandel's brilliant score for the film Death Trap, which I've again I know nothing about that one. No, it stinks. Welcome to the critics' finals. This. Oh, it's going to sound really harsh, but it's not. I'm going to give it a six. Okay. And that's not a bad score. No, I, I don't always say this score, all the time. No. It's above average. It just definitely... I'd put it this way. If I'm going to back to picking episodes, I'm definitely missing this one else. Yeah, yeah, I can understand. And that's, and that's the reason why I've given it a six. Um, turn that six upside down. I give it a nine. Wow, okay, <laughs> interesting. I love it. Um, I, I was thinking about it, and I was like, I was trying to think if I'd give it anything lower, but I just found it... I thought it was fun. Like yeah. I said, it, it's my type of story as well, which definitely helps. I literally watched it, and like as I was halfway through, I literally thought Luke's gonna love this. Mm. I knew it was right up your alley. So any, any type of like story like that, I'm, yeah. I'm all over. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, with three thousand five hundred and sixty votes, it got an eight point three from. Wow, the... fair enough. Very, very positive. Okay, that's good. Uh, and uh, yeah, apparently the critic reviews were uh, largely positive as well. Mm. So tends to be quite. Quite liked, which again, I keep we keep saying this. When are the bad episodes coming for this series? When are the bad episodes coming? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't say that. Yeah, watch the wall of bad episodes from now, <laughs> yeah. and we're like, like please take please them away, stop take those bad episodes more. away. <laughs> um, that's it for production notes and critex files this week. Um, so if you want to get in touch with the show, uh, send in a uh, tweet to um, most. Of, I always forget these as soon as I go into it. Just most unwanted. Most unwanted. Just Google that. You got us on Twitter, you got us on Facebook, don't really use it if yeah. we're completely honest. Just but just just we'll find email. you. We'll find, Send, you find us. All the stuff is below us in the uh notes on the episode. Next week we are looking at an episode called Terms of Endearment. I just want to like really quickly point out how I've been usurped as host of this episode. Oh, shit, this I week. Forgot we <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. You've just taken that role away from me. I was really enjoying hosting this week. I thought, you know, We've got a good thing going on. The listeners are really enjoying this. And then you just came in and just you served. As I started, I did see you smile and I was like, something's gone wrong here. I don't know what it is. Because <laughs> I was just 
much. Like, I'm going to leave you to it. You, you, you can do all the admin. That's fine. You can, you can give us the final word. The final host's word. Traitor. <laughs> <laughs> Wait,